Hi, it's Michael from Planet Naturopath. In this video today, I'm going to talk about the Dutch hormone test. We'll look at the difference between the Dutch complete and the Dutch plus test, as well as the Dutch cycle mapping. The Dutch test also looks at the adrenal hormones in details, plus some organic acid markers. That's a very detailed and complex test, so the best way is to show you an example of the test, and then you can decide how that can help you improve your health. So let's have a look at the Dutch test. So this is the first page of the Dutch complete test. This is a female hormonal sample and the key thing here is it's just a general overview of the test but in the following pages it goes into a lot more detail about the adrenal hormones and the sex hormones. This is the same page but it's a male version so you can see that the testosterone levels are a little bit low. We've got the estrogen here. On the female version we mainly focus on the progesterone and estrogen on the summary page. Female sex hormones are uh, broken down to a lot more detail on this page. When you first look at this, it might look just like a different language, but once you understand the basics, the test is quite easy to understand. The first thing I look at is the different types of estrogen. So you've got estradiol, which is the strongest of the estrogens, estrone, and estriol. And then down here, we've got the three different pathways where estrogen can be detoxified down. Ideally, we want to go down this green pathway, the 2-hydroxyestrogen, and we don't want to see high levels like this going down the 4-hydroxy, because that can be leading to DNA damage and can be associated with cystic breasts, breast cancer, fibroids, ovarian cancer, things like that. And then down the bottom, we've got the methylation of estrogen through the COMT gene. We also look at the progesterone metabolites, testosterone, DHEAS, and how testosterone is getting metabolized. This is important for women if they've got something uh, PCOS and going down this more androgenic pathway can also lead to things like acne and hair loss. This next page gives us all these same hormones again. The only ones that weren't on the previous page were things like total estrogen and the 5-alpha DHT. Most things were on the, follow, uh, on the previous page. It's just easier to understand when you can see the graphs and how it all flows into each other. The male sex hormone page is the same, uh, very similar anyway. We've got the three different types of estrogens, how they're getting detoxified. And even with men, we don't want it to be going down this red pathway because that can lead to things like prostate cancer. And the same thing with the testosterone metabolism. If it's going down this more androgenic pathway and having 5-alpha DHT being elevated, that can lead to hair loss, acne, in a worst case scenario, you know, things like prostate problems, prostate cancer. The adrenal hormones are also measured in detail. The first thing I look at is the total cortisol production. That's like the 24 hour cortisol uh, levels. And then we look at the total free cortisol and then the free cortisol pattern. This is probably the most important along with the total cortisol levels. And this person here, they have a reasonably good pattern, except it's going a little bit too high at nighttime, so they may have uh, insomnia or trouble getting to sleep at nighttime. Cortisol mainly gets metabolized to cortisone, and it's a similar sort of pattern here. Cortisone rises at night, suggesting higher cortisol levels. We also measure melatonin and the total DHEA production. The adrenal hormones are also mapped out in detail, but I find it easier to explain the uh, the patterns on the diagrams. So the same information on this page was on the previous page. So this is an example of low cortisol and it's very rare that you see very low total cortisol combined with very low free cortisol. A lot of people think that they have adrenal fatigue and just not producing enough cortisol but often people may have low free cortisol but still be producing enough overall but free cortisol is only a small percentage of your total cortisol pattern. And it can be the reverse. People can have low free cortisol and high total cortisol. And the treatment's different. That's why testing is important. So you can understand why you may have fatigue, hormonal issues, immune problems. And the test will help to, you know, the best way for you to go forward with treatment. Here's an example of very high cortisol. So we've got high production and very high free cortisol patterns that don't really change too much throughout the day and the night. This is someone with Cushing's disease, 
And once again, this is a fairly rare disease, but it can happen and it can be picked up by the Dutch test. The Dutch Plus measures the total cortisol production, but the free cortisol measure is measured with saliva. This gives us the opportunity to measure a sample of upon waking, 30 minutes later and 60 minutes later, and then later in the day. This cortisol awakening response is important when people have depression, anxiety, those types of symptoms. The Dutch Complete still measures that, but it measures it over a two hour period. Personally, I prefer the Dutch Complete because when you, we'll go back to the example here, when you do that very first sample in the morning, that's measuring the cortisol levels from the previous few hours. So you're still getting the overnight cortisol, which you miss with the Dutch Plus. And then this first to second one, it gives us that cortisol awakening response. The Dutch Plus just does it in a little bit more uh, detail. The organic acid markers, we check for B12. Methylmalonic acid is a more sensitive marker than B12 in a blood test. Sometimes you can have good levels of B12 in the blood, but still be low at a cellular level. Xanthurinate and chironate are neuroinflammation markers that are B6 dependent. So when they're elevated, it often means there's a B6 deficiency, but it can also be associated with anxiety, uh, low progesterone, which is B6 dependent, low melatonin. So understanding this can help to explain you know, why you may be experiencing the symptoms that you are experiencing. Glutathione is uh, one of the main detoxification markers in phase two of liver detoxification. Dopamine, uh, HVA is the metabolite, metabolite of dopamine and the whole body uses dopamine. So it's not specifically measuring the brain levels, but you can get a good idea based on someone's symptoms and this picture here if they're experiencing too little or too much dopamine. Similar with norepinephrine, it is a, it's like the flight or fight neurotransmitter or adrenaline. High levels can lead to that sort of you know, anxiety, always on edge, um, can't, can't relax. Uh, melatonin is important for sleep. Um, a lot of people have insomnia and they you know, try melatonin. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And doing this test can help to know, are you low in melatonin or is it too much cortisol that's stopping you from sleeping? And the very last marker is a oxidative stress marker. Uh, high levels can lead to DNA damage. And so this is an important marker to have low. So for women, they can also get an add-on to the Dutch complete test. This is known as the Dutch cycle mapping. And this measures the hormones. You do a test every day of the cycle and then we track how the estrogen and progesterone change throughout the cycle. So this is important if you're having trouble with hormonal issues at different times throughout the cycle, or if you're you know, having problems with fertility and you're just not sure when you're ovulating, um, is it hormones too little, too low? In this case here, uh, it looks like this woman is ovulating. They're just ovulating much earlier in the cycle than normal. And it doesn't mean they can't fall pregnant, but they just have to get the timing right to fall pregnant. And here is the uh, comparison of estrogens to the progesterone. And same sort of thing, after ovulation, progesterone rises, it's just rising earlier in the cycle than normal. So that's a very quick overview of the Dutch test, comparing the Dutch complete test to the Dutch plus, and also having a look at the Dutch cycle mapping for women. So if it all looks overwhelming, don't worry. I've worked with hundreds of people going through the Dutch test, explaining their results to them, helping with them with a treatment plan, and helping them get them on the right track to hormonal health. So this can work for both men and women, and the test can be ordered directly from planetnaturopath.com Dutch test. I'll put the, uh, the link to the test at the bottom of this video. And if you have any questions, you can contact us at planetnaturopath.com. So that's a very quick overview of the Dutch test, comparing the Dutch complete test to the Dutch plus, and also having a look at the Dutch cycle mapping for women. So if it all looks overwhelming, don't worry. I've worked with hundreds of people going through the Dutch test, 
explaining their results to them, helping with them with a treatment plan, and helping them get them on the right track to hormonal health. So this can work for both men and women, and the test can be ordered directly from planetnaturopath.com, Dutch test. I'll put the, uh, the link to the test at the bottom of this video. And if you have any questions, you can contact us at planetnaturopath.com. Thank you.